last speaker then is uh, of the uh, workshop will be Rodolfo Abraham Sanchez Isidro from UNAM, and the title is, is that one. So please, Rodolfo, all yours. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, the, the, this is, uh, I mean, first uh, I want to talk to the organizer for the opportunity. Uh, this is the research work that I follow, follow it with my thesis advisor, uh, Antonio Garcia Centeno. So let me give you a, a brief introduction. Um, so uh, in the one hand, uh, we have the different formations. Uh, I, I will talk in more detail in, in, in a few slides. Uh, in the other hand, uh, we, we have dualities. Dualities are, uh, are symmetries, uh, important symmetries in several uh, physical systems. Uh, for example, Maxwell, first Pauli gravity. And of course, in, in the string theory, uh, a string theory is constructed on, on the concept of, of duality. Uh, uh, nevertheless, in, in general, if you try to implement duality symmetry in, uh, in interacting theories, uh, the duality symmetry is broken, so this is a problem. But recently, um, uh, uh, appear a, a new theory, it's called mod max. It, has a, it is a mod modification of free Maxwell theory and uh, that preserves only symmetries, uh, including uh, duality, dual electromagnetic duality, I mean. And it's interesting because what uh, maps can be interpreted as a as a nitty bar deformation of the of the Maxwell theory. Uh, I mean nitty bar like deformation that I will be more precise with, with this term. Um, so there are some questions here. Uh, for example, how are uh, nitty bar deformations related? Uh, to dualities in nonlinear theories and how are duality symmetries related to integrability structures. But maybe these two questions are big questions, so uh, we need to ask for a, for a simple questions. Uh, for example, what is the physical meaning uh, or, or interpretation of mod max? And are there simpler models that preserve these properties in, in which we can learn something? And in particular, in, in this presentation, uh, I will address this last question uh, in order to try to formulate so, some answer to, to the big questions in, in this sense. Um, so uh, I, I will present to you uh, 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 a one, par one parameter family of nonlinear oscillators uh, that uh, could be interpreted as a the bar like the formation of the harmonic oscillator, uh, we can integrate the system. Uh, the system could be interpreted as a co couple of couplet oscillators. Uh, and moreover, uh, there is a nonlinear mapping that, that transforms the harmonic oscillator in, or, or a system in, in just one step. And we study the nice mechanical phenomena that, that, that our system enjoys. So let's start. And this is the outline of, of the, my presentation. This is an easy outline. Uh, I will talk about the different formations. Uh, then I will give you a, a review of, of mod max. Uh, I will show you how, uh, what, what is the root the different uh, the formation of the harmonic oscillator. And finally, uh, I will give you my conclusions and perspective. So, the uh, different formations. Uh, as you know, the different deformations are irrelevant deformation of 2D quantum field theories that results in, in new being complete and non-local QFTs. Uh, they, they are finally not an irrelevant flow uh, in the sense that uh, th there is a precise way to, define, to defa define the, the, the format theory all along the flow. Uh, they, are, they, they preserve the, the integrability. Uh, the S matrix is well defined uh, even in, in UV. And in particular, uh, they are not uh, RG flow in the sense that you are not integrating uh, any degrees of freedom. You, you have the same number of the, the degrees of freedom in, in the non deformed theory and in the deformed theory. So uh, let me talk about uh, some interest about the different deformations. First, uh, there is the theoretical interest, uh, for example, classify integrability to the quantum field theories in the sense that uh, 
what, what is the space of integrable theories? Uh, another interesting point is in, in, uh, in the string theory. Uh, for example, if you take uh, the, the free action of, of n uh, scalar fields, uh, and, and you apply a DT bar deformations, you will obtain the Nambugot string uh, in the static gauge. This is a beautiful result. And, and, and it shows that the DT bar deformations are really powerful. Uh, another interesting way uh, is not the not ADS holography in the sense that um, in CFD ADS holograph uh, correspondence you can take the CFD and apply a DT bar deformation and you can search what happened in the bulk in, in the sense that what happened with ADS in general uh, you you will obtain another geometry um, and last but not least. Uh, DT bar deformations are highly tractable in, in the sense that you can uh, compute uh, the spectrum and this matrix in the exact way, uh, as we saw in, in this last lace. Uh, this is a really good point. So, well, in, in more precise way, uh, what, what is a DT bar deformation? The DT bar deformations are a particular case of uh, deformations with them uh, Smirnov, Salo, some Molodov, Chikov uh, deformations. Uh, they are irrelevant deformations of 2D QFTs constructed of linear of two higher spin currents, JA and JV. And to implement the, the deformation, uh, the implementation of the, of the deformation consists in two steps. Uh, the first step is to find the OGA, GV uh, operator. This operator is defined uh, through this limit. This limit is always well defined, and the operator is well defined up to a total derivative, and it has a nice factori factorization properties. And uh, when you have this operator, you you consider it in the action. Um, in, in in this way, I, I mean, this is the flux equation. The, the operator must be satisfied the the, the flux equation. And you, you need to do this process. No, you need to do this process incrementally. I mean, uh, when you have the, the first order deformation, you go to, to compute JA and JV and GV uh, again. Uh, the, the, these currents are always defined. And you can you compute another uh, operator and, and so on. Uh, uh, in particular, DT bar deformation has this phase, uh, this t, t and t multiplying by t bar uh, minus t squared. So um, there are another generalization. For example, you can take uh, some current and, and, and t bar uh, uh, and t bar, uh, and you can apply the deformation j t bar or arbitrary combination of t t bar, j t bar, etc. Uh, but there is another generalization that is root of DT bar deformation. This is uh, what I mean with, with DT bar like. Uh, I mean uh, root of DT bar. Uh, and I will focus on, on this in, in this presentation. So let me give you a, a, a fast review of, of ModMax. Uh, ModMax is a unique nonlinear modification of, of Maxwell uh, equation that preserve all its symmetries. And I mean, uh, Lorentz invariant, U1 gauge symmetry, uh, and also electromagnetic uh, duality uh, and conformal invariance. These last two symmetries are really important uh, in, in several physical areas, uh, for example, condensed matter or, or a string theory, or, of course. Um, the, the, there are uh, Nonlinear non dynamic models uh, uh, that have been studied uh, has a possible guide to catch a new physics, for example, in, in cosmological problems. Um, th there are notable examples uh, as more infinite electrodynamics, the Linux Minula theory, and the Urel Heisenberg effective theory. Um, in particular, more infinite electrodynamics is an uh, important theory in the string theory. Uh, but, but the problem is that um, 
The most of the nonlinear dynamics model has been constructed in a heuristic way. In a heuristic way, uh, I mean, uh, without using uh, fundamental principles or or, ask, or asking for a fundamental symmetry. But 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 Max is a, a theory that is constructed from from fundamental symmetries. Um, let, let me give you uh, the, the, the max deduction in, in, in the fast way. Uh, first, you need to consider the constitutive relations uh, are this one. And the age calli calligraphic age is the nonlinear Hamiltonian of the electrodyna electrodynamics theory to be determined. Um, uh, we ask for the for the symmetries by uh, conditions. Uh, for example, uh, the rotational invariance needs uh, this condition. Uh, this is, this one is the condition for the Lorentz invariance. And conformal symmetry, of course, need, needs to to the trace of the energy momentum tensor uh, to be zero. And and the condition is this one, the second one. Uh, it means that the that the Hamiltonian is a homogeneous function of degree two. And the condition for duality is this one. So uh, we can take the, the duality variance and denoted by S and P. Uh, they have these phases. And, and using the Lorentz uh, invariant condition, uh, we can uh, obtain this differential equation uh, where H subindex uh, S and the subindex P uh, denotes the partial derivative of, of the Hamiltonian respect S and respect P. Uh, in order to solve to solve this this equation, uh, we need to define another basis for 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 duality. This is just technical details, uh, but but the, the the general solution for this equation are is this uh, Hamiltonian uh, that, that is um, no parameter dependent. dependent. Uh, and this is very interesting because if you take gamma equal to zero, you obtain boring field theory. If you take the limit uh, t goes to zero, you go to, to obtain uh, the linear quinula. And if you make the limit uh, t goes to infinite, you're going to, make, to obtain the uh, the, the Hamiltonian of mod max, that, that this is this one. And uh, we can write in in terms of, uh, of the duality variance uh, in this way. Um, so uh, the, the, there is a similar Lagrangian deduction in the sense that uh, you, you can ask for, for, for symmetries. Uh, and you need to solve a differential equation for, for the Lagrangian, and you obtain the Lagrangian of, of the of mod max. But, but we don't have a lot of time, so you, you can check the reference. Um, so um, I, I will show you the, 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 the Lagrangian of, of mod max but in another way. Uh, in particular, uh, I, I will focus on, on root of the bar deformations. Uh, so it's interesting to see that uh, if you start with, with the, the Maxwell action and we take account this definition for the scalar Lorentz scalars uh, S and, and P, um, uh, and you take account the, the, the energy momentum tensor, you can define the operator. Uh, the operator lambda and the operator gamma, uh, lambda and gamma just are parameters uh, are different to, to, in order to see the difference between the, the two deformations. Uh, th this is the way that, that we can uh, make the deformation. And if you make the deformation order by order, you, you're going to see that the series close uh, and the solution, and, and finally you obtain uh, in this side the boring field theory, uh, in this side the mod max theory. Uh, this, this is the Lagrangian of, of the of mod max uh, in terms of the of the Lorentz invariance. Uh, so okay. 
let, let me talk about my work. Um, um, my, my work consists in the group of deep learning formation of the harmonic oscillator. So you need to start with the harmonic oscillator. Uh, the harmonic oscillator has these two symmetries. Uh, this is the time translations. Uh, this is the rotation and invariance on the space. Uh, and of course, it, uh, they have a conserved charge, the, the energy and the angular momentum. Um, <clears throat> So we can define the operator on gamma n, I mean on gamma of the order n, and we can define the, the deformed Lagrangian of order n plus one in this way. So we, we can do the, the, the formation order by order. Uh, we can see that the, the serie close uh, and the complete operator is this one, and the complete Lagrangian is this one. Uh, of course, they, they satisfy the, the, the flux equation. Uh, this is this one. And you can compute the, the, the conserved charges. Uh, they are the formant, uh, and, and they are this. Um, it's interesting to see that the, the, the uh, hmm. I mean, if you consider J over J, um, I mean, J, oh, oh, uh, sorry, I cannot, uh, uh, J over J zero or, or E over E zero, uh, 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 these, uh, th these are the same in, in the sense that this, this, this term is the same in the two, in the two conserved charges. Um, for common names, we, we write the, the Lagrangian in this form because it's useful uh, for, for the Leander transform, transform, transformation. So uh, please take, take into account. So uh, I will talk about Hamiltonian defor the Hamiltonian deformation. Uh, in Hamiltonian deformation, uh, it's uh, quite different because the Nether theorem uh, needs a, uh, in Hamiltonian formalist, the Nether theorem uh, needs a uh, conserved quantity, and then you can compute a, uh, uh, asymmetry. Then uh, we need to give to the theory first uh, the, the conserved charges. Uh, then we can define uh, an, an operator gamma of order n in this way. Uh, and then uh, uh, we define the, the deformed Hamiltonian of order n plus one in this way, uh, as in the Hamiltonian la, uh, formalis, the ham, uh, Lagrangian formalis, sorry. Um, so, um, uh, taking account the Lagrangian formalist, uh, we have an answer to, to construct the deformed uh, conserved quantities, and uh, we reconstruct the, the whole series, and then this is the, the, the complete deformed uh, conserved quantities, and with these conserved quantities, you, you can see that the, the operator is this one, um, and the complete Hamiltonian is this one. And of course, they, they, they satisfy the, the, the flux equation. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the Hamiltonian is just in terms of S0 and J0. So uh, I will uh, drop out the, the notation zero, I mean, the, the index, uh, we, we don't need it. So, so I, I will write the, the Hamiltonian in this way. Where S and J are this definition of here, uh, but without the zero index. So uh, let me uh, talk, uh, talk about the integration. Uh, these are the Hamiltonian uh, equations. Uh, they are uh, highly nonlinear, uh, but uh, it's, it's straightforward to prove that S and J are conserved quantities and they are in the evolution. It, it means that. Uh, S and J commutes with the Hamiltonian, and S and J commutes between themselves, them, themselves uh, in, in the Watson brackets. Then we can define the new conserved quantities A and B in terms of S and J um, in this way. 
uh, uh, they are concerned what it is, uh, they commute in the part, they commute with, with themselves, the, themselves uh, in the what's well, bracket. So the, the, the Hamiltonian equations take this form. And this is uh, really good because they look like, just like uh, linear equations, and then we can, uh, and then uh, we can integrate the, uh, so so easy. And, and these are the solutions, are beautiful solutions because they are just oscillators, uh, but, but uh, they are not free oscillators. I mean, they, they are coupled. Uh, we will see how they are coupled in, in a few seconds. Um, in particular, we, we need to see that uh, the A and B are the frequency of these oscillators. This is a, a, a particular uh, fact. Um, so um, let me talk about Legendre transform. In Max, the Legendre transform is, is not trivial because the behavior, the nonlinear behavior of the theory, and it, here in, in the nonlinear oscillators, uh, it, it's the same. The, the, the Legendre transform is difficult to apply because the nonlinear behavior. Uh, well, we found an easy way to apply the, the, the Legendre transform. If we consider the Hamiltonian in, the for, in this form, uh, you can uh, put the, the explicit uh, form of A and B in terms of Q, P, and, and gamma. Uh, here, uh, and you can see that this is the, the complete uh, nonlinear uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, with this equation of motion, we, we can uh, uh, compute the uh, P in terms of Q dot and, and, and Q in, in this way, over the surface defined by A and B constants. So in the, in the other hand, we have the Lagrangian. This is the form that I, I Say you that you need to, to remember. Um, in, in this form, we can define the, these quantities, uh, sigma rho and C1 and C2. Uh, it, it's important to remark that C1 and C2 are constant of motion, but sigma and rho, they, they, are, they are not uh, constant of motion. Uh, it, um, Maybe you say, uh, what happened? This is the energy and this is the, the, the angular momentum, but this is the energy and angular momentum of the non-deformed theory. In the deformed theory, they are not a constant of motion, but what C1 and, and C2, they are. So uh, with, with these definitions, we can compute the, the, the Lagrangian momentum, and, and we see that uh, they, uh, he has this form. So uh, asking for the consistency between the Hamiltonian momentum and the Lagrangian momentum, we can obtain the Lagrangian uh, transformation. So uh, with, with, with this moment, with, with this Hamiltonian momentum, uh, we can compute a Lagrangian. Uh, we use these relations, uh, and you then obtain the, the complete Lagrangian, nonlinear Lagrangian correctly. So um, let me about this the nonlinear mapping. It's interesting to see that if, if you start with the, with the Hamiltonian of the harmonic oscillator, uh, you, you can define uh, this nonlinear mapping. Uh, that is so, it's very interesting because uh, over the surface uh, where A and B are constants, uh, this mapping looks linear, but what A and B are a function of, of P and Q and, and, and gamma, so this mapping is not highly nonlinear. But the, the point here is that this mapping um, transforms the harmonic oscillator into, into or nonlinear oscillators in just one step, because if you use it in, in, the, in the Hamiltonian, you will obtain this Hamiltonian. Uh, and if you if you use the the, the splicing uh, expression of a and b in terms of q p and gamma, uh, you will obtain the Hamiltonian the nonlinear Hamiltonian in, in evaluated in two gamma. So we we, we have performed the the complete deformation in just one step with this nonlinear map. 
And <clears throat> okay, so let, let me talk about the some dynamical properties in, in the uh, uniform dynamical properties of the system. Uh, for example, uh, okay, you, you start with the Lagrangian solution. Of course, the, uh, the Lagrangian uh, integration is possible. Uh, I, I didn't show you, but well, I'll show you, I, I'll show you uh, the, the integration of the Hamiltonian. So the, the Lagrangian is possible. Uh, you take the, <clears throat> the Lagrangian solution, and then you can consider these definitions, and then the Lagrangian solution, the, the form, uh, the, this is interesting because it describes uh, um, an oscillator with amplitudes that oscillates to. Uh, this is the definition of the bit phenomenon uh, in the classical mechanics problems. Uh, and we can observe it by plotting some solution. This is uh, an aleatory solution of, of the of the system, uh, we, we chose these, these uh, initial conditions and we use a gamma equal to one. And, and we see the solution, the blue is for Q1 and, and the and name is yellow. Yellow is for, for Q2. Uh, and we can see the bit solution, the bit phenomenon, and the bit phenomenon is um, consisting one, one oscillator uh, oscillates with large amplitude, and then the, the other oscillator oscillates with uh, small amplitude, and vice versa. Uh, so the, the last uh, dynamical property that I want to talk is the high end angle. The high end angle will be interpreted as the shift phase between the two oscillators. So one oscillator run uh, one period, and then the, the, the the other oscillator needs a phase to, to complete uh, the period. So we, we, we can compute it in this way. And this is the solution. Uh, this is interesting we, 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 because um, uh, this geometrical angle depends on the initial condition of the definition of A and B. Uh, and it also is the consequence of a coupling that can be interpreted as a covariant derivative. Uh, if we define this covariant derivative, the Lagrangian uh, could be written as, uh, as this. <clears throat> uh, it's interesting because it has the face of an of, uh, oscillator but in a, in a non-inertial frame. So let, let me talk about conclusion or perspective. <laughs> Uh, we have constructed a nonlinear classical system which consists in two complete oscillators. Uh, it, it could be interpreted as a root of the bar deformation of, of the two homogeneous harmonic oscillators. Uh, the system is integrable in terms of A and B that are, that they are functions of, or, or in terms of S and J and could be interpreted as the frequencies of the oscillators. Uh, oh, I don't know why. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I don't know what happened with my computer. Okay. Um, uh, we, we, we found how to perform the, the Yarnet transform uh, in a simple way. And we construct the, a nonlinear mapping that transform the, oscillate, the harmonic oscillator in our system, but evaluated in two gamma. But the important thing is that uh, this nonlinear mapping makes the work in. in in only one step. Uh, the system presents the, the bit phenomenon and we can compute the hand eye angle. Um, um, may, maybe later we can uh, uh, make the quantum analysis uh, of the system. Uh, I, I think it's interesting uh, to study this system in the context of the duality for point particles. And, uh, other applications like supersymmetric case and the relativistic versions could be explored too. So, uh, okay, I think that's all. Thank you so much. Okay, let us thank Rodolfo.